Uh, good morning, my name is Dr. Bhupat Singh Bhatti. I am a senior consultant and kidney transplant surgeon in Manipal Hospital, Kharari, Pune. Practicing gerology since last 21 years. Today we are going to discuss about the kidney stones. I will brief you about what are the causes, how can we prevent, what are the treatment modalities of the kidney stone formations. Let's start with what is kidney stones practically are. Kidney stones are formed when uh, the excess amount of crystals are formed in the urine and this crystal precipitates and forms an iris for the stone formations. Doctor, can I get a stone? Uh, probably in the population, anybody can get the stones. Though, who are at the risk of forming a stones? A patients with a past history of stone formations. They have a high tendency of forming a stones. One, patients who are taking a diet which is more centric towards the high protein diets, they are more uh, chances of getting the stone formations. Patients with a history of uh, intestinal surgeries in the past, they are more risk of getting the stone formation. Patients with a uh, medical disease of the kidneys like polycystic kidney diseases, they are more prone to get the stone formations. Also, there is a family history of stones. You do get a tendency of forming this. Overweight, sedentary lifestyles are also the risk factor for forming a stone formations. Now, how can I diagnose, doctor, I am having a stone. See, uh, normally you can diagnose a stone when you get an acute attack of pain and uh, a pain which is severe intensity in the back, coming in the front and which is causing a discomfort to you to go into the hospital and most likely you are uh, dealing with a kidney stone. This is one of the findings which we come across in our patients and the outpatient departments. Sometimes patients do present with a blood in the urine, the second most common modality by which we diagnose the patient with a stone. And other symptoms are difficult, uh, burning in the urine, Fever and chills can also be the presentation for the kidney stone in the patients. Now, once a, stone, a patient is there uh, with this symptom, what is to be done? First primary modality is to relieve the patient from the symptoms. How we reduce? Patient should be given the painkiller in the outpatient department to relieve him from the pain first. And then we diagnose the, whether the patient is having a stone or not. How to diagnose? A basic investigations are done on the patients in the form of ultrasonographic examination of the abdomen. We are able to diagnose the block in the kidney, the stone size, stone location and, and uh, how much uh, other findings like uh, in uh, are, is it because of the stone or some other reasons of causing the pain was there. We can associated bowel abnormalities can be detected by the basic ultrasound examinations. In addition to that, we do do patient uh, urine examination to see whether the crystals are there, whether the bacteria is there, whether infection is there in the patients. Also, the basic blood investigation in the outpatient department to know hemogram, kidney function test as a basic protocol in all patients. After diagnosing the patients, we do uh, offer in the treatment modalities. It depends on the size of the stone, location of the stone, blockage of the kidney pipes, how we are going to treat these patients. Uh, modalities of treatments are quite variables. We give a medical therapy in uh, most of the patients if a small stones are stuck up in the pipe and approximately 70 to 80 percent patients do respond if a size of stone is small with a medical therapy in the form of anti-inflammatory pain relief tablets and the pipe to relax the kidney pipes and it do help to get the complete clearance of stones. Other modalities which come across in the outpatient department is a shockwave treatment. Patients who are having a stones which are there sitting in the kidneys, they can be treated without any operation, non-surgical treatment by the shockwave treatments in which uh, two to four sessions, majority of the stones uh, get cleared by the shockwave th therapies. Other modalities are endoscopic surgeries in which uh, we, uh, depending upon the location of stone and the size of the stone, if stones are stuck up in the lower part of the kidney, uh, pipe for the ureter, we do it by the ureteroscopic procedure. It's a procedure in which patient admitted for a one day in the hospital and with a rigid instrument we take out the stones. Other modality is we have a now advanced treatment in our hospital by the flexible machines. We go into the flexible uh, RIRS uh, procedure in which we can go up to the kidney into the kidney chambers and take out the complete clearance of stones. A patient with a very uh, large bulk and hard stones are treated with a, uh, by making a keyhole surgeries, making a small hole in the back and we take out the stone and patient do get admitted for two to three days in the hospital to get the complete clearance. Now come how, uh, how can we prevent the stone formation? 
or some few basic questions which I come across in outpatient department from the patients. What is to be done? A dietary advice is very important in the patients. I recommend all patients, all in the population also, drink good amount of water. It should be at least 2.5 to 3 liters. The best indicator is the color of urine should be the color of water, which is the hydration status of the body, by which we tell the patients, number one. A low salt diet, it prevents the stone formations. And third most important is low on the proteins. Low protein diet helps in reducing the recurrence of stone in the long term in the patients. Patients do ask few basic questions. One, doctor, can I get a tomato, brinjal, palak? These are some food modalities care. Are these causing the stone formations? Uh, fact is, no, a dietary tomatoes does not cause the stone formations. Dietary palak and all other uh, cigarette food don't cause stone formations. Taken in excess quantity, we tell the patient not to take excess in excess quantity, but a normal lifestyle, these products are not the cause of stone formations. Doctor, is it a milk is the cause of stone formations? Answer is no. Milk does not cause stone formations. Patient can have a two glasses of milk per day in a normal lifestyle. Doctor, is it the calcium supplement which I am taking as the cause of stone formation? Answer is practically no. It calcium supplements does not cause stone formations and it should not be restricted if a doctor has advised you for the orthopedic issues. Fluid habits. Doctor, you are talking about the fluid. Can I take any form of fluids? Can it be the cola drinks for me or the heart drinks? Answer is no. You have to take a water. Water is the only consumption of the water can prevent the formations. Other fluids in the form of tea, coffee, cola drinks, heart drinks, they does not prevent the stone formations. Instead, they do cause a formation of crystals and leads to stone formations. Very commonly asked, doctor, can I have a beer? which is and can lead to the stone uh, relief, answer is no. Uh, intake of beer itself causes a lack of fluid concentrates from this thing and nidus for the stone formation. So it is not encouraging, to, encouraging from our end to drink beer. You should be taking a water. Quite often we come across patients asking, Doctor, I am sitting in the AC environments. Do I need to drink water still? Because I don't feel, uh, I don't have uh, this thing. Presence of uh, sitting in an AC environment causes the lack of moisture also and yes, you do need to drink a water even if you are sitting in the AC environments. Very commonly asked question from the patients, Doctor, I don't have a pain now. I had a stone last week but I am totally pain free now. Do I need to investigate? Answer is practically yes, you should get yourself investigated even if pain is not there because absence of pain does not mean you don't have a stone. You need to consult your doctor, get an ultrasound scan done and then confirm these things. Doctor, very commonly asked questions, give me the saline therapy or the IV fluids to get rid of stone. In a practical current scenarios, there is no evidence of any IV fluids can lead to the clearance of the stone from the pipe. IV fluids do help in a patient to relieve the pain or those who cannot take the oral intake of fluids, but it itself can uh, is not any by chance lead to the clearance of stone. Oral intake of water is sufficient, no IV fluids cannot uh, lead to the uh, clearance of the stones. We should not be encouraging this type of habits. Doctors, question for me only ask, I will go undergo operation. Endoscopic surgeries do lead to the recurrence of stone. Answer is no. No endoscopic surgeries can lead to the recurrence of stone formations. If a, some small fragment has been kept, left or missed by the doctor, it can be the source of nidus, but uh, endoscopic surgeries itself cannot lead to the formation of stone in the future. You can safely consult your doctor, get your stone treated. At the end, I would say drink good amount of water, low salt diet, low protein diet, do daily exercise for 45 minutes, healthy lifestyle and control your weight. This is what is required for most of the patients. Thank you.